Hey everybody, welcome back. This video is going to cover how to set up an approval workflow app that references a list of approvers that dynamically changes based off the category you select in the approval request. So we're going to start with two tables. The first table is the request table. Uh, we have an ID column, obviously, and then we have a category column to capture the category title, description, status, date, time, created, created by, approved by, and date, time, approved. In the approvals table, we have a list of the individuals by email address that have approving capability, approver rights, and the category that they manage. Let's go quickly turn this into an application. Once we're in the app editor, we'll add the other table. And then we'll go to the columns section and start to characterize our characterize our columns. So for category, we're going to do this smartly and use a data validity rule where we reference the approvers table and the category column. So you can see that this references this column here. And so it'll generate a list of category IDs in the table itself. And this has a benefit too, is you expand additional approvers additional categories will automatically show up in your application. We'll make sure the ID has a unique ID set. Title description are all set accordingly. For status, we can go ahead and set this as an enum. We'll, we'll have um, pending and approved. We'll keep it simple. In addition to that, we have the date and time created. So we'll want to double check to make sure the initial value is a date and time, not just a value for today. So we'll use the now function in this case. So we get the time as well. And then created by, we'll make sure that the initial value is the user email when the record is created. So whoever's creating the record will get logged as the individual that created that. Both created by and approved by should be email columns because we will be storing email addresses in them. And then date and time approved. We'll go ahead and set this to a change timestamp. And we can add the column status here. So when the status changes to approved, actually we'll automatically place a timestamp. In addition to this, some of these columns are not going to want to show in the form view. And we can go ahead and take care of that directly by hitting the edit button. So for example, created by. We're going to just capture this in the background. We don't need to show the user that because it just clutters the form. So under show, we can click the formula button and then we can reference the context view type and we can make sure it doesn't equal the form. And then we can go ahead and copy that formula too because we'll use it for other fields as well. So at the end of this, we're really only showing three different fields here when someone puts in a request in the form view itself. Go ahead and save that. Next, we'll go ahead and add a record just to populate it. So we have some references as we're building the application. Next, we're gonna go ahead and create some slices of data, right? Because we want to separate pending requests from approved requests. So we'll go ahead and create a slice called pending requests. And that will be attached to the request table and basically we want anything where the status is pending to be pending request. And you see AppSheet smartly identifies that as an option we can just click on and use. And then we can go ahead and create another one for approved. And we could say status is approved. And then we could use that suggestion from AppSheet to generate the formula too. So now with these two slices built, then we can start to modify our current view that was created automatically and um, change it, the description to pending, and tie it to the pending request table. In addition to that, we'll also make another view called approved requests and tie that to the approved request table. One thing I forgot to do was in status, um, we need to set an initial value. So when the record's created, it's automatically set to pending status automatically. Go back here. 
So now when we save it, we should see the pending requests in the pending view. So we should see all new records come here with, as a pending request, and then any approved records would show up in this view as well. So now we'll need to create some restrictions on who can edit pending requests. We want that separation where anyone that requests new a new approval will cannot edit and update that record. And that's a specific job of the approver itself to be able to modify the status. So very simply at a, at a easy level, we'll start at the highest level possible under the request table. And right away we can, we can use a formula for whether updates are allowed to restrict this on an individual basis. And right now we're only going to want approvers to be able to edit the requests. So we can click the flask button here and we'll basically, what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the individual that's logged into the app is in the approvers list or not. We'll use the in function here to pull the email address from the user logged in and then look to see if the email address is in the emails column in the approvers table. And then if this is true. We can put this in an if then statement where if that is true, so this evaluates out to true or false, then we can say updates only. So we're going to keep this simple and not allow for any deletions or anything like that. And then if that's not true, then we're going to go ads only. So in plain English, if the user using the app is in the approvers table, they will be able to update the record for the app. If not, they'll only be able to add new records to this table itself. So now you can see when I'm logged in this app, because I'm not on the approver list myself, I no longer see the edit button and I can only view the information or create a new request if I want to. And then we can test this by using one of the email addresses we put in the approver chain and changing our preview app as field to that email and you see the edit button comes back and that approver can come in and edit that information. Now this is not the most intuitive setup here. You're not going to typically want the approver to have to go and edit any fields. So what we want to do is, is create this, make this a little bit more simplified and cleaner um, for the individual. So that's approving. And so what we're going to do is we'll show system actions here. And what we're going to do is remove the edit, um, basically hide the edit button from the display because we really don't need that in this, in this simplified approval situation. Um, the request gets made and then it gets approved. And then we'll go ahead and also remove these other and hide these other um, fields here for composing emails and um, for both created by and approved by. These are all system actions that you may not need to use. So in order to create a more intuitive way to approve, we're gonna go ahead and create an action. This action is going to basically be approve and we're going to set the status to approved. And then we're also gonna log the email address of the, the individual that approved it by using the user email function. We'll go ahead and make this a, we'll use a check mark maybe as a way to signify, give a visual. So in addition to that, we want to do one more thing and that's going to be, we want to check to make sure that the individual, in order for them to approve this, be able to see this button and approve it, they need to be part of the right category. As you recall, we set this app up to have different approvers by category. So what we're going to do here is under behavior itself, we're going to check really quickly to make sure that 
when we look up the user email from the approvers table in the email column that it is equal to the category of that. So we're going to compare that to the category itself in the record. In addition to this condition, we also want that approve button to go away when it is approved. So we'll add a second condition here where status is equal to pending so that this approve button only shows up when the status is pending. So with the app save, we'll trust this out as Bob here, who is an approver for furniture. So you can come in here and click on the furniture request here, and you'll see that there's a button here to click approve. If we go to another request, we'll see that that approve button is no longer there and they cannot do anything about that request. So we'll go ahead and click that approve and then we can check the record itself. We'll see that that request was approved by Bob on uh, you know, right now as that happened. So at this stage, you can take this step further, clean up the views, modify them to make them more visually presenting. You could also add automations in the form of you know, sending email and text alerts for approval requests that come in. Uh, please check our other video about setting up emails. Um, I have a link in the corner that should pop up right now. So you can check that out if you're looking to set those up. So with that, thanks everyone for watching and have a good one.